was a time when <laughs> booze was sold by the fifth of a gallon for some reason. I guess they, they started with ten and they, just to, instead of ten, it just seemed too small. <laughs> Double that. Yeah. So anyway, uh, I was brought up in the Episcopal Church and I was very unsatisfied. Uh, I used to be one of the speakers that would get up in front of the microphone of the pulpit. I don't know if you've ever seen that they have it in church in the pulpit. <laughs> <laughs> I agreed with this good friend Mark that was in uh, arcane English. And, and I like that part. But the rest of it sort of didn't make any sense. And one of the, it's very much analogous for me to the ancient dinosaurs. I am so old, young woman. How old are you? I'm so old. I remember when there wasn't really any satisfactory explanation for the disappearance of the ancient dinosaurs. Although their brains were too small, they were like stupid. <laughs> so like other animals ate them. <laughs> Just, I mean, really, if you're a Tyrannosaurus Rex, you're gonna kick some butt. I mean, like, you don't really need to be to worry about the small things, do you? Except, of course, diseases, parasites. So uh, no, that's what we get you. Lions and tigers and bears are they're troublesome. Believe me, they are troublesome. But diseases and parasites, that's what will take you out. And trust me on that. You can try it. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> it's hilarious. Malaria joke. <laughs> 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 so, uh, anyway, I was very troubled by the lack of explanation for the ancient dinosaurs. It was quite a revelation when people discovered this meteorite, this crater, in the uh, Belize, if it's not the whole story, it's a pretty good story. And then I was alive when the layer of iridium was discovered around the world, and, or associated with this meteoric impact, with that multiple object impact. And uh, this sort of resolved a huge problem. And I am so old, I remember when uh, it was really still kind of a wacky theory that Africa would fit into South America in some fashion. It was still considered a little out there, even though the fossil evidence was pretty compelling. And the stratigraphy, the layers of uh, geology, uh, geological uh, deposits were very well associated. But now, plate tectonics is the underlying idea in all of geology. Now it all fits together. Now it goes, oh yes, of course, oh yes, yes. And so I often wonder what else it is that we're just completely missing that uh, will integrate all sorts of our current scientific ideas. And you don't have to know the whole answer right now. The joy, the PB and J, the passion, beauty, and joy, is in the pursuit of this, right? That's what that's what we love about science. It's, it is absolutely, to me, the best idea humans have ever had. Science. And I can even say science is the best idea we've had so far. Could change, right? Bring it on. You got a better idea, bring it on. Uh, the big unsatisfying thing for me is when you have a bumper sticker that says, uh, God said it, I believe it, and that settles it. It doesn't settle it for me. And I was in uh, Texas a couple years ago, you know, it still circulates on the web, at uh, McLennan University, it's a very interesting college there, uh, near Waco, near Crawford, and uh, yeah. No, I don't know if you've ever been to Crawford, Texas. It's just another zip code. It is Waco. I mean, it's all one thing, for better or for worse. And I said, well, it seems reasonable to me that whoever wrote Genesis there, as translated into English, where God made the sun to light the earth and the moon to light the night, probably didn't have the whole story. <laughs> probably. Because the moon, first of all, the moon doesn't always light the night. It's clear. I can tell the difference, sun, moon. I mean, I'm, I can see it. And then even ancient Greeks realized that the moon was an object that reflected sunlight. So these, this woman picked her kids up by the wrists and dragged them out of the room. I believe in God. Bill and I, you are evil. That may be. <laughs> but the moon doesn't give off its own light. I'm sorry. It's just, it's <laughs> and we all laugh at that, you know, as I said, preaching to the choir. But what we have to do is find a story that is more compelling. And I think we can find that easily because instead of focusing on the truth, 
we focus on the pursuit of it. We focus on the scientific method, the way to find the truth. And it's those stories that I find so compelling and so important. And by the way, when you were in astronomy class with Carl Sagan, every, every day there was a story. Every day there was some process by which somebody or some group of individuals had made a discovery. And uh, Jennifer made reference to my uh, involvement in planetary exploration. I'm a member of the Planetary Society. I'm Vice President of the Planetary Society, I'm on the board of the Planetary Society, which is something that happens uh, when you leave the room. Of your <laughs> hey, Bill, you're Vice President. Oh, oh. <laughs> but the thing that's so wonderful about you see a picture from Mars, which are now routine. See, soon uh, Japanese spacecraft is going to take new and uh, very exciting pictures of Venus. I hope everyone here is alive in 2015 when we bring back the first pictures of Pluto. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. So uh, this is not a discovery made by an individual. This is a discovery made by a society. That people thought this was a worthy pursuit. And then quite often people say, a very reasonable question, well, how can you be exploring space when there's so much to do here on Earth? Well, my friends, Think how the world would be if we thought the moon gave off its own light, if we thought the Earth were the center of the solar system, if we thought that the Earth were the only planet that had, that had uh, moons, had a satellite. How would the world be if we didn't have that picture from space from Apollo 17? How would it be if we didn't have a global positioning system? How would it be if we didn't have the internet? <laughs> The stars, you can't be serious. Yes, it's a time. Yes. It's a time of distant past. And it is through this, by the way, that we have made, to me, the most important uh, discovery facing humankind. As I said a few minutes ago, if you like to worry about things, this is it for you. We've got the economy, we've got human immunodeficiency virus, we've got We've got uh, people uh, who are going to acquire nuclear material who aren't familiar with the great traditions of uh, treaties and stuff. But what we really have, if you like to worry, is we have climate change. Climate change is going to change the world in ways that are, are literally hard to imagine. And it is this hard to imagine nature of them that is costing us so dearly in time. Uh, we're losing valuable time because of uh, because of this uh, disbelief in the scientific method. I mean, as I say to climate skeptics, if if you don't believe in climate change, why? Why don't you believe in it? And as near as I can tell, it's mostly people who grew up in very in, in wide open spaces. People who grew up you know, when there are a lot fewer people in the world. I remember Back in 1965, my family took me to the World's Fair in New York City. Yes, there were people alive in 1965. It's hard to believe. Yes. <laughs> and we had just missed my father and I, especially my father especially. My father was the guy that would pull the car over to take pictures of the odometer to watch it go from... <laughs> <laughs> Pulling the driver to the side of the road, the police are like, shh, 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 shh. <laughs> What are you doing, sir? We're just, uh, okay, it's right. <laughs> anyway, we got there right after this very large board, total board, tote board, had changed from 3 billion, uh, a change from 2 billion, 999 million, 999,999 people in the world to 3 billion. When we got there, it was 3 billion 700 and something. I, I, I claim I remember it pretty well. Well, that was in 1965. Now we're about 6.8 billion. By the end of next year, we'll be at 6.9 billion. And that's really the problem. That having that many people living on what's proving to be a very small planet is really going to be troublesome. 